20 minutes to 11 is SAFM, South Africa's news and information leader. And uh, we are going to be talking to Advocate uh, Lester Basson now. He's the Chief Master of the High Court at the Department of Justice and Constitutional Development. Uh, good morning to you and thank you for joining us. Good morning, I and listeners. Yes, thanks to be with you. Let's talk about uh, auctions and the involvement of bank officials. Uh, but first, how big a problem is uh, the one that uh, we... It's the one like uh, we saw with uh, regards to the the story of auction alliance uh, I, this is the sort of difficulty that one has when you sit in a regulatory position uh, there are often uh, accusations and stories seldom it gets to a point where there are facts provided upon which one could work so it's very difficult to say how big the problem is in reality. There are very few people uh, who, like Mrs. Applebaum, would have come to the master and say, here is a challenge that we have and that we should address it. In fact, there was not many people that have ever done that. Now that it has been done, um, it really is an eye-opener, and there will have to be a concerted effort to address what appears to be uh, bigger than what we thought problem. Before this story came out, uh, did you think uh, there were any problems uh, with regards to auctions? We were aware of certain individual challenges, but not on a, on a broad-based um, situation like we have now. What were you aware of? We were aware of certain groups of attorneys, uh, auctioneers, uh, appraisers in insolvent estates and a prestige, uh, you know, that pertain to insolvent estates, um, that they were working in what we would call an, an acceptable uh, uh, group of people, and we were attending to that. Unacceptable in what way? Where people uh, take more money out of an administrative process uh, than what they should. It, what we should say is an administrative process in an insolvency should be for the benefit of creditors, that the cost to get to that point where money is distributed should be minimized. Uh, these groupings uh, maximize the cost as opposed uh, to the detriment of creditors. In other words, it has become a lucrative business uh, for those that are not meant to benefit from it, but uh, meant to facilitate that is the wrong. The wrong is that that money should have ended up in the hands of creditors and workers, those who were dependent, who, would, who did business with that um, individual or company in liquidation. They are not getting the full amount that they should have because these costs were consumed somewhere in the process before. What should be done correctly when an estate needs to be wound up uh, or a company? Normally, if the matter cannot be salvaged in any other process, a court would declare an individual insolvent or a com place a company in liquidation. A liquidator would be appointed who, who would then be overseeing the process. The assets of that company or individual will be taken and will be realized, and then cash gets distributed. Now, that realization process often is a forced situation. It's not the situation where you sell your house, when you sell when and, uh, you are ready and convenient. But this is a situation where a process has to be completed, an asset has to be turned into cash, and the cash will be distributed. Now, this is where that process costs uh, are, are higher than what it should be. What is your role in all of this, uh, the role of your office? The master appoints liquidators. The liquidator will be the one who appoints the, uh, the auctioneer. But the master appoints the liquidator to do the process. The liquidator will account to the master for the process that uh, he has followed. That whole process is open for public to uh, participate in. Creditors have the right to vote. Creditors get a report. The, re the account, which is an account for what the liquidator has done, gets published in the newspapers. It's open. It lies open for inspection by the public. 
and the public is expected to come and have a look, see ex uh, to what extent their rights have been properly dealt with, and then the master, having had that process, will say, this is the final amount, then I confirm it, liquidate the payout according to the confirmed account. The master will then, if, if a person raises an objection to that account, the master will then deal with that objection. Yourself as the master, the, uh, as the chief master of the high court, uh, when you look at the figures and that uh, they don't tally and this is what's uh, supposed to have come in instead of uh, going for administration and facilitation, have you ever brought uh, any liquidators uh, to your office to explain the process and uh, the anomalies? Yes, yes they were consistent. You'll remember they were other very high-profile liquidators where the master has actually gone to the point where some action has been taken against them and some processes are definitely underway. So there are instances where the master has taken action and there are still several of those processes currently underway. What kind of actions uh, can be taken against people who it's felt that uh, they didn't stick to their mandate? They enriched themselves at the expense of the creditors. There are two levels. If in the process a crime has been committed or there's suspicion of a crime, uh, then obviously it will be referred to the National Prosecuting Authority and the police uh, for investigation and to deal with the criminal aspect. The master will look at the civil and administrative aspect. Uh, the, the type of action that the master can take is to reduce the trustee or liquidator's fee Alternatively, to then take that liquidator and say, you are no longer a fit and proper person, I uh, remove you from my panel of approved liquidators. Have you done that uh, more recently? Yes, we've done that. I've got some SMSs here which have just uh, come in, and uh, they point to bank officials. Uh, one says that AFSA and Gozul Natal is in cahoots with uh, property developers and uh, they sabotage bondholders' accounts. It comes from uh, a gentleman by the name of Joe. The other one says, please look into APSA bond department, particularly in uh, Durban for fraud with regards to auctions. And the first people bribed are the master staff. Uh, they have sold rights to appoint liquidators. Uh, this is from uh, Lindol. How do you respond to those SMSs? One thing, if a person is aware of a crime or an irregularity, report it to the police. That, that's where you should go where you have knowledge of a crime. To keep quiet about it is to allow that un, uh, unholy process to con continue. That should not happen. People should report crime to police and they will deal with it. If the crime is re uh, referred to the master, the master will definitely take steps to have that brought under the attention of the police. Where allegations of, for instance, that there's between an auctioneer and the bank official uh, some irregularity, it's nothing within the master's office as such. Remember the master deal with the liquidator. The liquidator appoints the auctioneer. The auctioneer then has a relationship with the bank official. What we say is report irregularity, take it to the police, give facts. You know, uh, uh, it's very difficult to react to a vague statement. There is definitely no capacity within the master's uh, branch, so to speak, to do these uh, fishing expeditions and see can we prove that suspicion that that person has. We would much rather have facts to work on and then deal with that. We, we, we also want to address the statement that there are corrupt officials within the master's office. I'm quite prepared to give my cell phone number on air and my email address and to also provide an anonymous uh, mechanism where this uh, uh, a crime could be reported. Let me give that to you. There's a toll-free hotline, 8 701 There's a toll-free corruption hotline. If you feel that there are something, somebody in the master's office corrupt, please immediately report that so that we can deal with it. 
We are busy with other initiatives to address this challenge. Uh, the Minister has uh, approved the consultation on a policy to appoint liquidators. A uh, consult consultative process is taking place. Those who want to see the current policy under discussion can see it on the website of the Department of Justice at www.justice.gov.za under the, uh, the heading Master of the High Court, you will find uh, the current discussion document. Uh, and you're also welcome to contact me, and I will put you in touch with us if us that are dealing with the consultative process. That policy aims at one to transform the, uh, the appointment process where there will not be a predictability a situation where we uh, uh, unholy alliances between attorneys, auctioneers, and appraisers could be formed because an independent, capable person will be appointed based on a fair basis. It will also aim at black economic empowerment, where we would say this industry must be open for everybody, and we would particularly want to follow and advance the um, objectives uh, as in our constitution. So that process should, uh, to a large extent, address the master and the auctioneer, uh, not the master and the liquidator. When it gets to the auctioneer, we will have to have a much deeper uh, investigation into this, into the level of uh, irregularities that have taken place, and that's the way we will have to deal with it. What is the process to follow for a person who wants to report uh, irregularities? Let me give at least three options. You can send by snail mail anonymous to uh, the chief master, private bag X81 Pretoria. You can email me at elbasson at justice.gov.za. You can make use of the toll-free hotline, the number I've given you, and happy to give it again if listeners need it. 0891104207, that's the telephone number to dial. We are in conversation with Advocate Lester Basson, the Chief Master of the High Court at the Department of Justice and Constitutional Development. Auctions and the involvement of bank officials and liquidators. Uh, uh, we're speaking about alleged auction kickback, and you can give us a call. You might have experienced that. You might have suspicions of that. You might need clarity with regards to that. You can give us a call 0891 or drop us an SMS 34701, and those are charged at uh, two rent. And we'll be taking your calls and reading your SMSs when we return. Hi, you reached Debbie. Leave a message. Debbie, I know that I've said sorry before. I know, but now I've written this song for you. Just hold on. <coughs> Until we go. If you want to find an original way to serenade your loved one, then SMS the word love with a short description of your story to 45640 or drop us an email at love at loveisallyouneed.co.za or find us on Facebook. SMSs cost one rand fifty. The new Companies Act has introduced a variety of amendments that have serious implications to all companies and close corporations. Recently, MNS has developed a thorough understanding of the new Companies Act so as to assist small and medium enterprises to comply with this act. For this and many other legal issues, contact the experts, Medici and Global and Sedimedi attorneys. In short, MNS attorneys at 011-447-3811. The Ebba Booly Boo Mamma Mia Concert Tour is the best Ebba tribute production in the world and will be visiting South Africa from 4 to 14 April. Shows at Port Elizabeth, Bloemfontein, Pretoria, and Carnival are now totally sold out. Good news, however, is that Leper Productions scheduled an extra show at Carnival City on 13 April. Also remember, shows at KKNK, 4 April, Hardenboos, 5 April, and Cape Town, 7 April. Bookings at Country Ticket. Morning Talk on SAFM.
Mm. Advocate Lester Basson, uh, the Chief Master of the High Court uh, at the Department of Justice and Constitutional Development is our guest. We're talking about uh, alleged auction kickbacks uh, and uh, the SMSs that have uh, come in. Uh, what are the kind of questions uh, that uh, you ask when uh, the liquidators appoint auctioneers uh, uh, advocate? Because uh, there's an SMS which has come through from uh, Linda says in 25 years, I never knew the master's office uh, find out any fraud or ask uh, an intelligent question to the liquidators. The right to appoint an auctioneer would rest with the creditor and the liquidator. The master is not involved in that process. But are you not supposed to safeguard uh, uh, the interests of the creditors and ask uh, questions just to find out uh, exactly why? Would, because uh, the uh, bottom line, as you said earlier, is the one that's considered that you need to get as much money for the creditors as possible. Yeah. The, the choice, uh, we, we cannot say to the liquidator uh, which attorney would he choose, uh, which uh, bank would he use to open his bank account. So there's administrative processes which falls within the responsibility of the liquidator. Remember, what the liquidator does gets reported to, to creditors in a report at the creditors', creditors second meeting where they can then get together, ask and question the liquidator on his choice. In fact, at the second meeting, creditors can give a direction to the, to the liquidator as to who to use and how to use. So there's a mechanism, a platform, where this uh, process can be checked and controlled by creditors. Remember, the master is, is there to look after the interest of many others, the vulnerable in society. If we have creditors capable of transacting with an insolvent or a company, we would say, creditor, you look after your own interest. Here is a process. This, this uh, trustee or liquidator will report on his administration at the second meeting. That second meeting is advertised in the newspapers. There's a publicity given to the process. The document is open for inspection. And then people with concerns can come and raise it. Given what has come to light, will you be scrutinizing the process more closely? Definitely. Definitely. This is an unacceptable, you know, we are a country where we want to get rid of corruption and irregularity. And we will definitely have a much closer look at this whole process when we uh, uh, implement the policy on the appointment of liquidators. We will set the standard uh, and agree in a code of conduct on what is acceptable and what is not acceptable behavior. So we are definitely in the process of systemically addressing it and where there are individual instances of irregularity to react and deal with information in an appropriate manner. What are the lessons learned? To me, it's a matter of people must share information on irregularity. It's it helps precious little for people to have sat on information about irregularity and not share it with the authorities. When you're aware of an uh, irregularity, why don't you come and expose it? There are many uh, instances where people may have their own hands not clean. We would say that's perhaps a reason why you are not exposing others. But what we say, we need a new transformed industry where people should feel free to come and report what is irregular as to keep it for themselves and at one point say, yes, I knew about this for 25 years, but I never mentioned it. A number of investigations are underway by the National Consumer Commission and the Estate Agency Affairs Board. Uh, would you be following those closely? Definitely so. Definitely so, because there are areas that fall under the master's jurisdiction and responsibilities and um, so that we, we have a role to play, we will definitely do that. Well, thank you very much uh, for sharing your time uh, with us. Uh, that's Advocate uh, Lester Basson, the Chief Master of the High Court at the Department of Justice and Constitutional Development.